Good evening. I would like to call the first meeting of the 2022 to 2026 council meeting to order. Please be seated. We recognize and acknowledge that we meet on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Members of the public are advised that our meetings are webcast live by the City of Hamilton. As a reminder, all electronic devices should be switched to a non-audible function during the course of the meeting. It is my pleasure to welcome Joseph Martin from the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory to begin the welcoming ceremony. Sego sewa kwego. Sego gwenyo syungets, wok skalevege, dat nyo shwigen lono. Ani bojo, jodna dijnakash, makwadodam, nyo kredit na dojiba. Good evening and welcome. My name is Joseph Martin. I'm from Six Nations of the Grand River um, Territory and I'm from Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Um, was asked today by Chief in Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council to provide the opening, uh, the Thanksgiving address. I'm going to perform the Thanksgiving address in the Mohawk language, and then I'm going to proceed with a English translation, followed by a statement from Chief Mark Kill in Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council. At this time, before I do the opening, I ask you please turn off your cameras and your videos as I do the opening. Thank you. Uh, you can also take your hat off, please. <clears throat> So don't see us can joke us and go out in a single way a diesel, new he did in a lot in a single way a diesel, new he did in a lot in a way go gino hodo, do a dole lost on your neji on jade. Jolanto did in a lot in a own way soon, I hit any don't get any on what niguna. Did in a lot in a kidney star on jade, hit any don't get any on what niguna. Did in a lot in a negalonio, hit any don't get any on what niguna. Did in a lot in a gun joke soon, I hit any don't get any on what niguna. Did in a lot in a ojino walk soon, I hit any don't get any on what niguna. They teen a lot in a gakwa soon, I hate to need Dongani on Guatnigula. They teen Lane Gahik soon, I hate to need Dongani on Guatnigula. They teen Lane on Nunqua soon, I hate to need Dongani on Guatnigula. They teen Lad in a Gelhi de soon, Dono Ogle soon, I hate to need Dongani on Guatnigula. They teen Lad in a Gundilio, hate to need Dongani on Guatnigula. They teen Lane G Dongu, I soon, I hate to need Dongani on Guatnigula. They teen Lad in a Kenny Staha, I sent Taneka Galakwa, hate to need Dongani on Guatnigula. They chidden a lot in a Sungwa, Gia and Jege Galakwa, hate to need Dongani on Guatnigula. They teen a lot in a Ladiwela, Satan need Dongani on Guatnigula. They teen Ladi Oji Stokolonio, Nijigalonyage, Eton need Dongani on Guatnigula. They teen a lot in a Gaeli Nigalonhuage, Eton need Dongani on Guatnigula. They chidden a lot in a Sungwai Diso, Nene Sewa Gatan, Oya Aze, when he salade, Eton need Dongani on Guatnigula. On a Eto Seo Guego, Doga Ateno Segeni Goha, Izene, Sokodago, Dana Isla Sihoge, Dana One Eto, Nyawa. Everyone, listen for a short while. It's important that we give thanks to the Creator. And it's important that we give thanks to everything that was provided on earth for us by the Creator. First, we give thanks to all the people on the earth, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to our mother, the earth, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to all the waters on the earth, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to all the fish life in those waters, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to all the bug life on earth, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to all the food sources on earth, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to all of the hanging fruit on earth, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to all the medicines on the earth, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to all of the trees and to all the whips on earth, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to all the animals on earth, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to all of the bird life on earth, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to our grandmother, the moon, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to our eldest brother, the sun, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to our grandfathers, the thunder beings, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to the stars in the sky, now it's put into our mind. And we give thanks to the four winds of four directions, now it's put into our mind. We give thanks to the creator that we all got to see another new day, now it's put into our mind. That's it, everyone. That's the best that I can do. 
there's anything I forgot to give thanks for, you yourself fix it and give thanks for it. Thank you, Yama. So you can put your hats back on now or take pictures if you want to. Um, so again, a little bit more about the Thanksgiving address. Uh, it's one of our most um, sacred ceremonies that we perform every day. We give thanks when we wake up and when we go to sleep, uh, we greet the natural world. Um, so again, today I'm here uh, representing Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council. I in no way represent the traditional government of Six Nations of the Grand River. I'm here today solely representing Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council. Um, and today I'm going to read a statement from Chief Mark Hill to the new council. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to congratulate the newly elected and re-elected members of the Hamilton City Council for being chosen by their constituents to represent them in their political sphere. I would also like to congratulate Mary-elect Andrea Hover with and wish her well on this new political journey. The relationship between six nations of the Grand River and, city, and the city of Hamilton is historic and one we look forward to continuing and building on further with the new administration. Our hope is that throughout this next municipal term, we can all govern with good minds and never forget the trust that our people have put into us. As this evening gets underway, let us keep the thought in our minds as we welcome the new mayor and council of the city of Hamilton, Nyawa, and I wish you all a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph Martin. Please stand, if you are able, for the singing of the national anthem by the Hamilton Children's Choir alumni. Thank you. Please be seated. I would now like to introduce a few people in um, the procession and on the stage. To the left, um, we have Joseph Martin on behalf of the Chief Mark Hill from the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory who gave our welcome today. Greg Dennett, President and CEO of the Hamilton Chambers of Commerce. On my right, Mayor Horvath. The Honorable Justice Martha Zivilak. Patty Hall, Executive Director of the Stony Creek Chamber of Commerce, and Matteo Patricelli, the Executive Director of the Flamborough Chamber of Commerce. I would now like to read the clerk's certificate. I, Andrea Holland, clerk for the City of Holland, certify that the following members were elected to Hamilton City Council. For Office of the Mayor, Andrea Horvath. Office of Councillor Ward 1, Maureen Wilson. Office of Councillor Ward 2, Cameron Kretsch. Office of Councillor Ward 3, Narinder Nan. Office of Councillor Ward 4, Tammy Wang. 
Office of Councillor Ward 5, Matt Francis. Office of Councillor Ward 6, Tom Jackson. Office of Councillor Ward 7, Esther Mills. Office of Councillor Ward 8, John Paul Danko. Office of Councillor Ward 9, Brad Clark. Office of Councillor Ward 10, Jeff Beatty. Office of Councillor Ward 11, Mark Tattison. Office of Ward 12, Craig Kassar. Office of Ward 13, Alex Wilson. Office of Ward 14, Mike Spadafora. Office of Ward 15, Ted McMeekin. Council. Sorry, this council shall serve shall serve the citizens of Hamilton from November 15th, 2022 until November 14th, 2026. I now call Justice Martha Zivilak to the podium for the declaration of office for the mayor. Good evening. Mayor Horvath, are you ready to rise and subscribe to the Declaration of Office? Please do so. I. Andrea Horvath, having been elected to the office of the mayor in the municipality of the city of Hamilton, do solemnly promise and declare that I will truly, faithfully, and impartially exercise this office to the best of my knowledge and ability. I have not received and will not receive any payment or reward or promise thereof for the exercise of this office in a biased, corrupt, or in any other improper manner. I will disclose any pecuniary interest, direct or indirect, in accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III. And I make this solemn promise and declaration conscientiously, believing it to be true and knowing that it is the same force and effect as if made under oath. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. I now call on Greg Dunnett, President of the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce, Patty Hall, Executive Director of the Stony Creek Chamber of Commerce, and Matteo Petricelli, Executive Director, Flamborough Chamber of Commerce, to the podium for the presentation of the chain of office.
Hello, I'm Patty Hall, Executive Director of the Stony Creek Chamber of Commerce, and I'm speaking on behalf of my fellow chamber colleagues, Matteo Praticelli of the Flamborough Chamber and Greg Dunnett of the Hamilton Chamber. We're honored to be part of this very important ceremony, and we want to convey our eagerness at our ongoing collaboration with all of you here. <clears throat> this is especially memorable this year with the historic significance of having Hamilton's first female mayor. Your Worship, Mayor Horvath. <laughs> and members of City Council, City's officials, and everyone in attendance, we as the three chambers operating here in Hamilton acknowledge how vibrant the City of Hamilton has become. As a Hamiltonian, born and raised, I can attest to the many wonderful things that we have here in this city. We have industry, small and medium business, world-class healthcare and educational facilities, exceptional sports teams, and a bustling art scene. We continue to be innovators and entrepreneurs. We have a very involved community and business organization groups, all wanting to make things better for all Hamiltonians. On behalf of the Flamborough, Hamilton, and Stony Creek Chambers of Commerce, we congratulate each of you on your well-deserved wins. And we look forward to working with you, Mayor Horvath, and each councillor in our respective areas. We wish you all great success. And to us, success means that you can represent your constituents and have the fortitude to work together collaboratively for the betterment of a greater Hamilton. Let's continue to be the city that is the best able to attract further investment and be the place everyone wants to be. I look forward to a thriving Hamilton four years from now that was made better by all of, all of you. Again, congratulations and thank you very much. I'll now say a few words and start by saying, good evening, everyone. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hamilton. I'm so very, very happy to be here with you, with council on this historic night. Tonight, we start a journey, a journey of change, a transfer, a transfer of the mantle of responsibility, of governance from the outgoing council to the new one. There's been a lot of change on council. Some of that change is historic. That makes tonight a night of firsts, a night that announces a new way of doing things. I wanna start by expressing my gratitude. I feel grateful, grateful that the people of Hamilton who voted and trusted with me, and trusted in me, a sacred trust that is the mayoralty. I know the result was close. I had very worthy opponents in Keenan Loomis and Bob Bertina. And I want to start by saluting them and those who participated in their campaigns. I hope that your enthusiasm for our city continues as we work to build a new era with a renewed council. Let's give them a hand. I feel grateful to be surrounded at the council table by so many unique and diverse voices, all of whom are passionate about making Hamilton the thriving city it can be, the success story it should be, the leader among Canadian cities that it has been, and will be. I want to thank Mayor Fred Eisenberger for his successful leadership. His leadership over three terms in office. Fred, you've laid the groundwork for our city to excel. 
I'd also like to congratulate outgoing councillors for their service. You put yourselves forward for public office and served our city, and that is always to be applauded. I feel humbled because I realize the challenges our city faces. They're serious and they're profound. Some are systemic. And all will require serious investment of time and thoughtful planning to be addressed in a sustainable, open, transparent, and compassionate fashion. Tackling the challenges that our city faces can be approached in two ways, reactively or thoughtfully. When we look at cities who have led in these areas, we see common themes, broad, inclusive consultation of residents, careful attention to civil society, and thoughtful long-term planning based on evidence-driven foresight. My term as mayor will be guided by these principles as I approach our city's policy, governance, planning, and development. Housing affordability. Housing affordability is the number one issue I heard about as I met thousands of Hamiltonians during the campaign. We pressingly need to address the housing shortage our city is experiencing. We'll work together to eliminate the affordable housing wait list by collaborating with not-for-profit housing organizations, private market developers, and the provincial and federal governments to get projects started fast. I was already very pleased just recently to hear from our regional federal minister, Philomena Tassi, that Hamilton has again been selected to be a recipient of funding from the federal government's Rapid Housing Initiative, which means, <laughs> which means resources. That means resources to quickly build new units, and those resources will be coming soon. As Hamilton's population grows over the next four years, we are going to need to continue to develop partnerships with the provincial and federal governments to ensure more investments like these. We cannot develop a housing plan that excludes vulnerable residents. As we move forward to address our housing affordability challenges, we'll recognize, we will always recognize, that safe, healthy, affordable housing is a basic human right. And so our approach will include planning to tackle homelessness, create supporting, supportive housing for those struggling with mental health and addictions, accessible housing designed for persons with disabilities, and safe transitional housing for women and their children fleeing domestic violence. You know, recently, the provincial government announced sweeping changes, sweeping changes to how housing development is regulated across the province of Ontario. In light of these changes, we need to quickly develop a plan to make sure that Hamiltonians get the most thoughtfully planned and implemented new housing developments possible. Hamilton needs more housing, particularly affordable housing, but we need to build that housing in a sustainable and fiscally responsible way. Housing developments need crucial infrastructure, such as good roads, libraries, parks, and community centers. We need to make sure that new developments built because of the province's changes to the development uh, regulations support and sustain our ability to create complete, livable communities. That's what we need to be sure of. Pedestrian and cyclist safety is another issue that came up quite a lot. Pedestrian cyclist safety are challenges that I've heard from residents in all of our city's neighborhoods and regions, from downtown to the suburbs, from rural areas to our smaller communities. We will find ways within existing budgets 
and through adjusting of current plans to make sure that traffic calming and pedestrian throughways link our city's natural beauty to public transit in intelligent, useful ways. We will consider accelerating and expanding our Hamilton Cycling Master Plan to create a city where residents can safely and more surely travel via public transit, bicycle, and by foot. To achieve this, oh, absolutely. To achieve this, we're going to need to renew Hamilton's transit plan to take us beyond 2025 and work with key transportation stakeholders to expedite the implementation of the BLAST network. Keeping LRT on track, no pun, is a key priority as well. And that will mean regularly engaging with Metrolinx and with Hamiltonians. We also need to support the ongoing move to a low carbon transportation in our city. And that's... <laughs> Give me a chance for a sip of water. And what that's gonna mean is both renewing the city's fleet in a sustainable way and assuring greater availability of electric vehicle charging facilities for the public. A thoughtful and planned approach to these and other innovations in transit and housing will help us make significant progress on Hamilton's climate change action plan. And we will do this. We will do this because Hamiltonians deserve a cleaner, greener, more livable and welcoming city. Hamiltonians deserve streets that are functional and safe for all users. I heard loudly and clearly that the state of repair of our roadways is a source of angst for many and their vehicles from all parts of our city. Whether that's maintenance and repairs or volumes and traffic, we will be responsive and solution oriented when it comes to addressing these concerns. The rise in hate incidents that we have seen over the last couple of years have left our city polarized. Some of our residents are fearful for their safety. This sort of insecurity is, it's terrible. It's terrible for our city because it's pretty clear when people don't feel safe, welcome and secure, then they don't, they don't take risks, they don't innovate and they don't thrive. We need everyone in Hamilton working together to build the thriving Hamilton of the future. And that means creating conditions that will make everyone feel safe and encouraged to reach their potential. More concretely, it means tackling hate systemic racism and discrimination in all their forms by working with communities and leaders with greater openness and in a more collaborative spirit. We will support, resource and champion Hamilton's urban indigenous strategy. We'll continue to strive towards implementing the 94 Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action and the 231 missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited people calls to justice that are in our purview. You know, my experience in politics have, have shown me that while it's fantastic to make assertions about uh, commitment to progress, those commitments are meaningless if they're not tracked. To address this, we will undertake an annual assessment of how we're doing in reaching our goals and publicly report on progress. You know, if we track progress without communicating and discussing that progress with Hamiltonians, then how can residents be inspired to believe that their city is actually becoming a better, safer, more inclusive, compassionate, and prosperous place to live? We will rethink 
how the city engages Hamiltonians and stakeholders on these and other matters through a new approach to communications and public engagement that reflects our commitment to openness, transparency, and evidence-based policy. You know, I've spoken about how I feel grateful and humbled. I want to tell you also how incredibly excited I am about Hamilton's prospects. As I said many times during the campaign, I am convinced that Hamilton's best days are ahead of us. We are a city poised to lead in so many areas. We are strong in the arts and culture sector. We have solid economic, industrial, commercial footings that, that succeed really because of a talented and skilled workforce. And our diverse population possesses deep know-how on how to take innovative approaches to social development. Our diversity, in fact, drives innovation in the professions, businesses, arts, and in the trades. Indeed, our city is at a crossroads of cultures and languages. Literally, a crossroads of the world. Our growth relies upon ensuring that we are an inclusive city where everyone feels welcome, respected, and supported to realize their potential. That's how we mobilize the talent, expertise, and enthusiasm of all our residents. We will work to create a city where everyone has the tools, security, and confidence to turn their dreams into reality. That's why I've already started working uh, to strike that diverse public advisory committee that I spoke about uh, in the first 90 days. And that committee will be tasked with recommending improvements to access, transparency, and accountability at City Hall. And then I invite all of my council colleagues to work with me on this project. I've also already started planning on how to convene a Hamilton leadership table that really does bring together Hamilton's elective rep representatives from all orders of government, municipal, provincial, federal, and school boards, to work together for the benefit of Hamiltonians. Now, I know that our federal members of parliament are already on this journey together, and so I'm borrowing it from them with pride. They have frequent nonpartisan Team Hamilton meetings, and we are going to be doing the same. We need to expand their successful initiative to other levels of government to have a powerful Team Hamilton approach. This is a city that was built on workers and the labor movement. As the daughter of an auto worker, I saw firsthand the importance of labor to making our city a better, fairer, place to live, work, and play. Hamilton is where the movement for the nine-hour workday in Canada was started. In 1920, Hamiltonians Katie McVicker and Mary McNabb, members of the Shoe Workers and Knights of Labor, fought for the rights of women to join the labor force and to be respected. Indeed, the building trades, steel workers, teachers, healthcare workers, transit workers, first responders, and many others have assured that our city is safe, healthy, and prosperous. They have contributed enormously to our engaged civic culture. The labor movement has been a core part of Hamilton's successes. For Hamilton to stay a leader in workers' rights, Hamiltonians need good jobs. That's why we need to find ways to leverage our advantages in advanced manufacturing to build on our experience in steelmaking and heavy manufacturing. We need to help commercialize post-secondary research from the three excellent post-secondary institutions and our research hospital network into dynamic startups that start in Hamilton and scale in Hamilton and stay in Hamilton. Our film and television sector is expanding and can be an even greater source of high quality jobs for Hamiltonians. 
We need to support and encourage this expansion as we need to support the expansion of the digital industries that are building infrastructure, landscapes, and workplaces of the future. With our strong post-secondary institutions and our fortunate geographic placement, there is no reason why these innovations should not be developed in Hamilton. We'll also promote innovation, uh, innovation in agribusiness, which already contributes a billion dollars to our economy and can be developed to contribute much more, ensuring that Hamiltonians, Ontarians, and Canadians have healthy, affordable, and sustainable food sources. And we do this by supporting our farm families and rural communities. Indeed, we, we will leverage and further develop our current positioning as a regional logistics hub. Our deep water port, airport, rail, and highway system is strong. Now we need to maximize the, these advantages to build and attract the businesses that will create well-paying jobs, greater prosperity, and create a more fiscally sustainable future for our city. Attracting the businesses of the future will not only create well-paying jobs for our residents, it will start to put us in a fiscal position where we can realize some of our more ambitious social development plans. As I've said many times, sustainable development and economic growth should go hand in hand. However, through public consultation, Thoughtful planning and evidence-driven foresight cannot be achieved if our house is not in order. One thing I heard loud and clear during the campaign is that the residents of Hamilton want greater openness, transparency, and accountability. And I'm sure my colleagues on council heard the same thing. Having, spoke, having spoken with all of them, I know that that is one of their priorities as well. That means a new way of doing business for City Hall. That means a City Hall that's more welcoming to residents' questions and concerns. That means a City Hall that proactively maintains and publishes key performance indicators on how its operations are making Hamilton a better place for its residents. We live in a digital age where most people turn to digital communication first when they want to learn or inquire about their city. We will develop a more streamlined and effective approach to how we use our website and other digital channels such as social media, audio, and video. Indeed, we need to make sure that we develop the city's digital assets to reflect our commitment to inclusion, openness, transparency, dialogue, and building a sense of belonging. Finally, we must never forget that Hamilton is made up of its people. It's Hamilton's people who have helped our city reach its historic heights. It's Hamilton's residents who work with me and who will work with me and Council and City Hall to build the thriving, healthy, safe and prosperous city that we all want. As your mayor, I will work to inspire, motivate, and mobilize all of our residents, starting with our wonderful, dynamic new city council and the folks at City Hall to do better, to reach higher, and to leave no one behind. We will work to build the Hamilton of our dreams and aspirations. We will build a city that is again a leader in Canada. And we will do this important work together, inviting everyone to participate, to innovate, and to thrive. So let's get started. Thank you all so much. Thanks all so very much 
Uh, I do now want to call Justice Martha Zivilak to the podium for the declaration of office for members of council. Justice Zivilak. Thank you, Your Worship, Mayor Horvath. In a moment, I'm gonna ask all the councillors to stand, and then starting with ward number one, um, you'll say your name, and then when we're finished having everyone indicate their name and their ward, we'll proceed uh, in reading the oath of office in unison. All right, are you ready, councillors? Please stand. And remember, you'll need to activate your microphone when you um, give us your name and your ward. Ward 4. I, Matt Francis, Ward 5. I, Tom Jackson, Ward 6, East Mountain. I, Councillor Paul, Ward 7. I, John Paul Danko, Ward 8. I, Brad Park, Ward 9. I, Jeff Beatty, Ward 10. I, Mark Tattison, Ward 11, Glambrook. I, Craig Kassar, Ward 12. I, Alex Wilson, Ward 13. I, Mike Spadafora, Ward 14. I, Ted McMeekin, Glambrook, Waterdown, Ward 15. Thank you. Please continue with your oath of office. City of Hamilton, do solemnly promise and declare that I will truly, faithfully, and impartially exercise this office to the best of my knowledge and ability. I have not received and will not receive any payment or reward or promise thereof for the exercise of this office in a biased, corrupt, or any other improper manner. I will disclose any pecuniary interest, direct or indirect, in accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III. And I make this solemn promise and declaration conscientiously, believing it to be true, and knowing that it is the same force and effect as if made under the oath. Thank you. Now, if I can call again um, the councillors from Ward 1, I believe, to 8, to come forward and in the order of your ward, come forward, bring your oath of office, please, and um, you'll sign it with me. Let's see. Do you so solemnly declare? Uh, I think you need to go back in that direction, but good luck getting through. <laughs> Ward number two. Do you so solemnly declare? I do. Ward number three. Do you so solemnly declare? I do. Okay. 
Number four. Do you so solemnly declare? I do. Ward number five. Do you so solemnly declare? I do. Ward number six. Do you so solemnly declare? I do, Your Honor. Ward number seven, do you so solemnly declare? Yes, I do. Ward number eight, do you so solemnly declare? I do. Ward number nine, do you so solemnly declare? I most certainly do. They're gonna stick together, aren't they? Ward number 10, do you so solemnly declare? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, I should go first. Yeah. Ward number 11, do you so solemnly declare? I do. Ward number 12, do you so solemnly declare? Yes, I do. Thank you. You're welcome. Ward number 13. Do you so solemnly declare? I do. Ward number 14. 
Ward number 14. Do you so solemnly declare? I do. And ward number 15. Do you so solemnly declare? Yes, I do. Can I have the musical equivalent of a drum roll? <laughs> it's legal. Here's your city council. So it's official. The City of Hamilton's 2022 to 2026 City Council has been sworn in and we've got a lot of work ahead of us. And looking forward to it. I think we should be putting our name plates up so that uh, we can officially do that. We now have just a tiny bit of business, and so I'm going to ask Councillor Jackson. Councillor Jackson, would you please present your motion respecting the ratification of the Standing Committee membership? Madam Mayor Horvath, I will. Moved by myself, seconded by Ward 5 Councillor Matt Francis, the Council membership on the Standing Committees and the Hamilton Municipal Heritage Committee for this term of Council 22 to 26 be approved the council members appointed in the following standing committees for audit, finance, and administration, for emergency community services, for planning, for public works, for general issues committee, for board of health, and lastly, that the appointment of Councillor Cameron Kretsch to the Hamilton Municipal Heritage Committee for this term of council, 22-26, be approved. All the names are recorded publicly accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Can I now ask members of council to please indicate your vote now by raising your hand. All those in favor? <laughs> Any opposed? That motion's carried. Thank you so much, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Nan, would you please present your motion respecting the ratification of the shareholder, sole voting member groups, agencies, boards, and tribunal membership? Certainly, it would be my pleasure, moved by myself and seconded by Ward 4 Councillor Tammy Wang, that, count, that council members' appointments to the following shareholder and sole voting member groups for the 2022 to 2026 term of council be approved for City Housing Hamilton Corporation shareholders, for Hamilton Enterprise Holding Corporation shareholders, Hamilton Renewable Power Inc. shareholder, Hamilton Street Railway shareholder, Hamilton Utility Corporation's shareholder, sole voting member of the Hamilton Farmers Market, and that the city solicitor be directed to prepare the appropriate bylaws and any ancillary documents as may be required to give effect to the council member appointments to the shareholder and sole voting member groups for 2022 to 2026 term of council, as shown above in subsection A, and that the council member appointments to the following agency boards and tribunals for 2022 to 2026 term of council be approved for the Electra Board of Directors, the Art Gallery of Hamilton Board of Directors, City Housing Hamilton Corporation Board of Directors, Conservation Halton Board of Directors, 
DART's Board of Directors, Development Charges Act and Education Act complaints, Dundas Center for the Arts Board Management, Dundas Community Services, Golden Horseshoe Food and Farming Alliance, Grand River Conservation Authority Board of Directors, Hamilton Arts Council Board of Directors, Hamilton Center for Civic Inclusion Board of Directors, the Hamilton Enterprise Holding Corporation Board of Directors, the Hamilton Farmers Market Corporation Board of Directors, the Hamilton Library Board of Directors, the Hamilton Licensing Tribunal, the Hamilton Police Services Board, the Hamilton Renewable Power Inc. Board of Directors, and the Hamilton Street Railway Board of Directors, Hamilton Tourism and Development Corporation Board of Directors, the Hamilton Utilities Corporation Board of Directors, the Hamilton Waterfront Trust Board of Trustees, the Heritage Green Community Trust Board of Trustees, the Hess Village Pedestrian Mall Authority, the International Children's Com Games Committee, the Municipal Drainage Court of Revision, the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority Board of Directors, the Red Hill Valley Joint Stewardship Board, the Royal Botanical Garden Board of Directors, the Terrapure Community Liaison Committee, Theatre of Aquarius Board of Directors, and the Greater Toronto Transportor Transportation Authority Board of Directors, and that the City Solicitor be directed to prepare the appropriate bylaws and or any ancillary documents as may be required to give effect to the council members' appointments to the agency board's tribunals for 2022-2026 term of council, as shown above in some section B, C, sorry, C, and that the following three nominees for the one appointment to the Niagara Escarpment Commission for 2022 to 2026 term of council be forwarded to the Minister of Natural Resources for consideration as listed, and that the following nominees from the City of Hamilton be considered um, as the Rural Ontario Municipal Association Board of Directors Zone 3 representative in the upcoming election for the Rural Ontario Municipal Association Roma Annual Conference, and that the following members of council be considered as one representative who represents Hamilton, Grimsby, and Niagara on the Halton Hamilton Water Source Protection Committee. And finally, that the following members of council be appointed to the respective business improvement areas of Hamilton, including the Ancaster BIA, the Barton Village BIA, the Concession Street BIA, the Downtown Dundas BIA, the Downtown Hamilton BIA, the Hamilton International Village BIA, King Street West BIA, Lock Street BIA, Main Street Esplanade BIA, Ottawa Street BIA, Stony Creek BIA, Waterdown BIA, and finally, Westdale Village BIA, as listed on the public record. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nan. Members of Council, please indicate your vote uh, by raising your hand. All those in favor? <laughs> Any opposed? That motion carries. Now, anybody who doesn't think that the councillors are hardworking, you know that that's not the case because there's a lot of work to be done. So thank you all for putting your names forward. And now I would call on Councillor uh, Maureen Wilson to please present your motion on the confirming bylaw. Thank you. It's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Cameron Crutch from Ward 2 that Bill number 22-261 be passed and that the corporate seal be affixed there too and that the bylaw be numbered, be signed by the mayor and the clerk to read as follows, 261, to confirm the proceedings of City Council. Thank you so much. Uh, members of Council, please indicate your vote now by raising your hands. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you all very much. It is now time for the dismissal of the Honour Guard. The Honour Guards are dismissed. I'd like to invite everyone in attendance tonight to the reception, which is out in the hallway, uh, but also to remain seated 
uh, as the city of Hamilton's 2022 to 2026 city council uh, is being drummed out of the meeting room, uh, can I please have from the members of council a motion to adjourn? Moved by Councillor Nan, uh, seconded by Councillor Pauls. All those in favor, please indicate. Any opposed? That motion is also carried. Joseph Martin. Would you please begin the closing ceremony with the Spirit Bear Drummers drumming the 2022 to 2026 Council out of our meeting room. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Hello, Mayor Horvath. Uh, now I will do the Thanksgiving address again, the closing in the Mohawk language. I will not um, follow it with a translation in English, and then we'll uh, follow up with the singers. So the whole series can joke us and go away. Ne sangwa ediso ne wahi de tino la de ne sangwa ediso ne wahi de tino la de ne agoi guji na hodo do a dole la sanya ne ji honja de jujulunto de tino la de ne ungoi sanga hitani donge ni ungwa ni gula de tino la ne keni staha honja de hitani donge ni ungwa ni gula de tino la de ne gane galonyo hitani donge ni ungwa ni gula de tino la ne gunjok sanga hitani donge ni ungwa ni gula de tino la ne ojino wak sanga hitani donge ni ungwa ni gula de tino la ne gakwa sanga hitani donge ni ungwa ni gula de tino la ne gahik sanga Hitani donge ni ongwa ni gula. De tin la ne onung kwa sunga. Hitani donge ni ongwa ni gula. De tin la ne gelhi de sunga. Da no ugole sunga. Hitani donge ni ongwa ni gula. De tin la ne gundilio. Hitani donge ni ongwa ni gula. De tin la ne jita ongu a sunga. Hitani donge ni ongwa ni gula. De tin la ne keni staha a sunga tane ke galakwa. Hitani donge ni ongwa ni gula. De chidi nu alada ne sunga ajio injege galakwa. Hitani donge ni ongwa ni gula. De tin alada ne lariwela. Hitani donge ni ongwa ni gula. De tin la ne oji sto kolonyo ne jigalonyage he tin i donge ni ongwa ni gula de tin la ne gaeli ni galonhoage he tin i donge ni ongwa ni gula de chidi nu la ne sangwa edi so ne ne se wakatu ne oya aze wani salade he tin i donge ni ongwa ni gula ona eto se oguego doga teno se geni goha he zene so kodaga da na isla sihoge da na ona eto nyawa.
welcome you, but you all have to welcome us and all the way. Okay? So you're going to have to remember. <laughs> Okay, when, when you go like that, you guys have to say that. 